What's up, guys? My name is Zach, and today I am driving a 2017 Volkswagen Golf GTI. Up front is a 2.0 liter turbocharged inline four, and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now, I am super excited to be driving this Golf GTI for two reasons. First of all, it's the manual, and this is how I prefer my Mark 7 Golfs. However, I've driven a handful of these on the channel before in automatic, in manual. I've driven the Golf R of this generation. And so today I'm not breaking any new ground in terms of the interior, exterior, and drivetrain. However, I do want to sort of expand the conversation on why we love hatchbacks so much. And what better a car to talk about that with today than the Golf GTI, which dang near started the hot hatch category. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that four-cylinder turbo under the hood. Well, it makes about 210 horsepower, which I think is a good healthy amount. Anything really from about 180 to 250 in a hot hatch in the modern era is good enough for me. And the reason I say modern era is because modern cars are so much heavier than they used to be. So you got to kind of up that power number for that power to weight ratio, blah, blah, blah. I also reviewed a Volkswagen Polo GT that was a lot lighter, but made a lot less horsepower, but was equally as fun. So you could check out that video later on if you'd like. I'll leave it at the end. But that two liter turbo is one of the cornerstones of the Golf GTI. Now, Volkswagen uses this engine in dang near everything that they produce, even going all the way up to the Porsche Macan uses this 2.0 liter turbo in their base spec. So very, very interesting and very well thought out and used engine from the Volkswagen Group. Now, like I said, paired to it is a six speed manual transmission. The seven speed automatic is actually a dual clutch transmission called the DSG, and it's very, very good. But in terms of feel and preference, I prefer this six speed manual. I think it has a great click into gear. It's very responsive. It's very fun to drive. And in a sporty hatch like this, I want to shift my own gears, and that's what Volkswagen lets me do. Last but not least, the GTI is front-wheel drive. However, if you go up to the Golf R, you actually get all-wheel drive. So if you do want all-wheel drive, that is a possibility here in the Mark 7. You just got to go up to the next trim level and the top trim level, which was the Golf R. So how does it feel to actually drive a Volkswagen Golf GTI? Well, it's a great, fun driving experience. It is a hot hatch that is very, very enjoyable. Is it going to break land speed records? No, not quite, but that's not really the point of the car. It is going to enhance and help you enjoy your morning commute, going to work, going to school, going to church, whatever it might be. It's going to add a little bit extra zest here and there. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two physical gauges and a screen. Off to the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature, and off to the right is my speedometer and fuel, and in the center I get a little digital screen giving me some information. I like it for 2017, I think it's a pretty decent middle ground of quality. It's not the highest quality screen I've ever seen, but it also has several different colors where a lot of cars in this era were just either black and white or black and red, things like that. On the steering wheel on the left I have my cruise control options as well as volume, and off to the right I have my skip track and selectors for that screen along with the phone and voice commands. The steering wheel does say GTI down at the bottom, a little bit of a reminder that you're driving something a little bit hopped up, a little bit more special than the more traditional Golf. And off to the left, I do have a climate control vent, headlight switch, and my gauge dimmer switches. Moving out of the door, we have the power mirrors and power lock options, and down lower, we have the power window options. Moving into the center, we get two climate control vents and the infotainment system. I actually really like this infotainment system now knowing what the modern Volkswagen infotainment system is. I think this is actually a better, more intuitive system. It's easier to use. I like the mix of buttons and a touchscreen. And of course, this does allow for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, which which is nice for 2017. That was still a newer technology back then. So it's good to see that. Then we do have the climate controls 
Temperature off the left, fan speed in the middle, where to send it off to the right. And we do have our heated seat options found here as well. I love the seats and I love the fact that they're heated. That is a necessity for me in a new car purchase, especially living here in the Midwest, where it is starting to get very, very cold. Then we do have a little cubby and we have the shifter. So the shifter looks great. I love the fact that it is a little golf ball, sort of a tip of the cap to their not only lineage, because they've been doing this since I believe the 80s but of course it's a golf ball we're driving a golf love seeing that consistency the engine start stop button is off to left and we do have our drive mode buttons so we have normal sport and custom so love seeing that customization found there as well as our traction control off button is found down here and off to the right we have a bunch of dead switches don't love this but it's the Volkswagen group. It's pretty typical to find. Then we do have a 12 volt outlet and the cup holders. So we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the Mark 7 GTI. And unfortunately, but predictably in a smaller vehicle like this, it does in fact fail the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we do get a center console. We do get a physical parking brake too, which I love. These are going away, especially in manual cars. If I'm gonna shift my own gears, I like having a manual parking brake as well. And I get that here. Now, the seats are another really special topic. Definitely a throwback to the lineage of the GTI seats. I love this checkered pattern. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2017 Volkswagen Golf GTI. And this is my preferred version of the GTI. I know that they make two doors. I know that the original was a two door. I'm not a fan of two door cars. If there's a four door version, nine times out of 10, I prefer the four door version over the two door version. Obviously cars like the Miata, S2000, why am I only thinking of convertibles? The Genesis Coupe, I think all of those look good as two doors and are functional, but if I have the option for a four door where my backseat occupants can actually get in in a normal fashion or semi-normal fashion, I don't know why this guy is deciding to park right next to me and that's very annoying, this happens all the time. I prefer four, I just, prefer for it just makes life easier and i'm all about making my life easier if you can't tell anyway back seats uh we do have some fold out cup holders in here we do get vents back here very very rare to find in a car of this size and caliber my mazda 3 does not have vents in the back seat the honda civic does not have vents in the back seat this does so your rear seat occupants actually stand a fighting chance against the elements. Other than that, nothing really too crazy to note, but very, very cool to be in the back seat of a Golf GTI Mark 7. Let's hop out, we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. One thing I've always loved about this generation of Golf GTIs is the rear trunk release. You push this in and then you pull up. I think that's wonderful design. I've never seen these break. I'm sure some have, but it's not a common issue. They designed it really well and it really hides it. Once we are back here, it's a daily car. It's daily duties. As you can see, it's got a bunch of parts that are ready to go on it. It's plenty for your groceries, a weekend or even week long trip. We do have a 12 volt outlet in here, which I love. And overall, this is the glory of a hot hatch is that you get to have fun up front and you get to be serious and carry cargo in the back. Love the duality of the GTI. Now we gotta talk about the looks and I think the Mark 7 is the most handsome of the Golf lineage so far. The reason I say that is because it's really improving upon the Mark 6 which was really improving upon the Mark V. And I think they sort of naturally progressed to a great point where yes, the Mark VIII is an evolution of the Mark VII, but I think they pushed it a little bit too far. I think they made it a little bit too angry. I think this is sort of the sweet spot. Not overdone, but not too subtle. And I like that about the Golf GTI from 2017. But now with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving yet another Golf GTI? Well, first of all, 
just driving dynamics and such, it's always a good time to drive one of these. I wouldn't drive so many of these on the channel if I absolutely hated it. I really enjoy the clutch, I enjoy the shifting, I enjoy the engine, I enjoy all the dynamics, I enjoy the creature comforts that I get in here. It's overall a really, really well done package and that's what keeps me coming back for more and that's what keeps Volkswagen fans coming back for more. But I did want to talk about a new and different topic here in this particular video, and that is the hatchback. Why are we drawn to hot hatches? And I would love if you put your thesis or your conclusion down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts on this topic as well. The Golf GTI has always been a hatchback, whether that be in the two or four door versions, that's up to you, but it's always been a hatchback. And back in the late seventies, Volkswagen came out with the Mark one of which unfortunately I haven't driven, but I have driven a Mark two golf. And so here's the footage of that. You could see it's a hatchback. Why are they all hatchbacks? Why wouldn't you just make a regular car? Well, an interesting time occurred in the 1970s, which was the oil crisis and a big, big emphasis on building more economical cars. So you really didn't see hatchbacks pre-1970s. And the reason for it is to maximize the amount of space inside of a car without making the footprint of the car any larger or really harming the aerodynamics of the car. You pair that with a little engine and front wheel drive for efficiency and now you have the world's economy car. We saw this with the Yugo, the most affordable car of the late 1980s, front wheel drive, four cylinder hatchback. Now. That wasn't a fantastic example of one and a rather unreliable one, but it was the most affordable and put a lot of people on wheels for the first time. We saw this with Hyundai's first car here in the States, the Hyundai Excel, four cylinder front wheel drive hatchback. And by the end of the 1980s, almost every company had something fitting of this formula. Four cylinder hatchbacks in mostly front wheel drive with the occasional all wheel drive is the winning ticket and it's because it just naturally makes the most sense. You get the most space, you get the most efficiency out of your car for the least amount of money. But then Volkswagen said, hey, let's turn it up a little bit. Yeah, four cylinder front wheel drive hatchbacks are great, but what if we gave it a little bit extra juice? What if we hopped it up a little bit? What if we also made it fun to drive? And now you have something very practical, very enjoyable, and that won't break the bank. This is sort of the every man's working class sports car because not everyone can afford to have two cars but I'm not made of money and compromises have to be made but compromise doesn't always mean a bad thing compromise can be very very good and although this car is a compromise between many different things of a sports car an economy car and a daily driver it doesn't mean it's bad and it actually ends up being very very good. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys sort of enjoyed going through the process of why hatchbacks are so loved and really the perfect setup for an automobile. Huge thank you to the owner Miller for letting me take out his Golf GTI. I was so excited to drive his car. He's been so excited. He just picked up this car a month ago and has done already almost 3,000 miles in it. He really can't be peeled out of the seat. I was lucky enough to get him out of here for the last hour and a half. But Miller's been absolutely awesome, huge asset to the channel. He's a wonderful photographer as well. Please go check out his work over on Instagram. These are a couple of the press cars of mine that he shot that you've seen here on the channel. He did some photo shoots of some of the cars that I've had and he is awesome and I cannot recommend him enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.